Do you know who the first Colorado astronaut was who flew in outer space? Hi, I'm Bill Jones with a look back in Colorado history. The first Colorado astronaut to fly in outer space was only the second American to orbit the Earth behind John Glenn. Scott Carpenter graduated from Boulder High School and later the University of Colorado with a degree in aeronautical engineering. His voice is also burned into American history as the mission control officer for the launch of Glenn's Friendship 7 mission in February of 1962. Godspeed, John Glenn. Just three months later, on May 24th, John Glenn was also on hand for Carpenter's liftoff from Cape Canaveral on board Aurora 7. Carpenter's five-hour mission was going smoothly until his scheduled re-entry after three complete orbits. With millions of Americans glued to their TV sets, CBS anchor Walter Cronkite announced Carpenter's tiny spaceship was lost after overshooting the planned landing site by more than 200 miles. Simultaneously, radar and voice contact went out, so there was no proof, no proof whatsoever for 46 long minutes that Scott Carpenter and the Aurora 7 had survived re-entry into the atmosphere. Scott Carpenter was one of the seven original astronauts chosen for NASA's Project Mercury in April of 1959. He was later portrayed by actor Charles Frank in the 1983 movie, The Right Stuff. Terrific, Scott. Good. You're probably just getting warmed up, John. Carpenter and John Glenn were the last two surviving astronauts from that Mercury 7 project, but Carpenter died in 2013 at the age of 88, just three years before Glenn's death in 2016. I'm Bill Jones with a look back in Colorado history. Ten. Nine, eight, ignition sequence start. Engine Do you know five, what Colorado-born and bred astronaut three, two, uttered those iconic words, nine, Houston, we have a problem? Hi, I'm Bill Jones with a look back in Colorado history. Roger that, rolling right, zero. The astronaut who said, Houston, we have a problem, was portrayed by Kevin Bacon in the movie Apollo 13. Hey, we've got a problem here. What did you do? The astronaut he portrayed was Jack Swigert, who was born and raised in Denver, where he attended East High School when he got his pilot's license at the tender age of 16. He later graduated from the University of Colorado with a Master's of Science degree in Aerospace Engineering before becoming an astronaut in 1966 and he was one of three astronauts on board the ill-fated Apollo 13 moon mission, which was launched on April 11, 1970. Astronaut Swigert notified Houston of that life-threatening problem shortly after the rupture of an oxygen tank on board the spacecraft. NASA immediately aborted the scheduled moon landing, and failure was not an option as scientists worked frantically around the clock to bring Swigert and his two fellow astronauts, Jim Lovell and Fred Hayes, safely back to Earth a few days later. Several years later, Swigert ran for Congress in Colorado's 6th Congressional District and won. Tragically, though, he died of cancer just a week before he would have been sworn into office. Colorado-born astronaut Vance Brand thinks it's amazing just how far space exploration has advanced in just the past 50 years since Apollo 11 first touched down on the moon. Since the lunar landing 50 years ago, we've uh, done great things in the uh, unmanned area. The uh, robots have gone out into the universe and explored <clears throat> several moons and planets and uh, even gone out to the 
as Pluto. So we've done a lot of uh, just outstanding work, but we never made it to Mars. Brand, who grew up in Longmont, was a member of the first international space mission, the Apollo-Soyuz mission, back in 1975. That mission almost ended in tragedy when Brand and fellow American astronauts Deke Slayton and Tom Stafford were exposed to poisonous gas. We had a mixture of hydrazine and nitrogen tetroxide uh, fumes into the cabin, and uh, it was uh, unexpected. It uh, sent us to the hospital in Hawaii for about a week, and uh, after that I was jogging again in about two weeks. Brand was also the commander of three space shuttle flights and was part of the backup crew for the Apollo 14 mission. I'm Bill Jones reporting. You can hear the rest of the story about his adventures in outer space and his prediction for landing on Mars by logging on to www.jonesnewsservice.com. Again, that's jonesnewsservice.com or by clicking on the moon link at this station's website. Colorado astronaut Vance Brand had a bird's eye seat as he watched NASA engineers scramble in a frantic race against time to save the lives of three astronauts stranded on board the Apollo 13 moon mission back in April of 1970. Okay, Vance was part of the support crew at Mission Control in Houston when an oxygen tank explosion crippled a fragile lunar spacecraft. It was just a magnificent job that NASA did, that people like, uh, well, flight directors, there were several of them, Gene Krantz and uh, Lynn Lenny, several others did just a magnificent job in figuring out what was wrong, what had happened up there, and uh, how to get those guys home safely. And the engineering crew did work miracles as the crew of Apollo 13, including Colorado astronaut Jack Swigert, returned safely to Earth just a few days later. As for the future of space exploration, Vance says America needs a clear plan for going to Mars, just like President Kennedy laid out a clear vision for going to the moon in the early we 1960s. We to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. It was uh, take people to the moon, let them walk around on it, bring them back safely. That was a goal. Uh, if we had a goal, and the money to back it up, it would be very focused, and we could make it probably within a decade. To hear more about Vance Brand's adventure in outer space, log on to www.jonesnewsservice.com. Again, that's jonesnewsservice.com, or click on the moon link at this station's website. Do you remember where you were 50 years ago when Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin took a giant leap for mankind after landing on the moon? Kent Rominger lived in a tiny town just south of Alamosa and was only 12 years old but vividly remembers it was a day that would change his life forever. I remember being so excited and I was in Del Norte, Colorado in the living room of my parents' house watching it on the, a black and white TV and it was fuzzy. But it was just a, a very amazing and inspirational moment for me where I just I was having a hard time believing that we, we as humans were actually walking on the moon. Rominger grew up to become an astronaut himself and finally remembers how those early days of space exploration inspired him to follow his dreams. Alan Shepard was the first human, the first American to fly in space. He was always kind of a hero of mine, John Glenn, you know, uh, I love following his career. Rominger has since been inducted into the NASA Astronaut Hall of Fame and has flown longer and farther on board the space shuttle than any other astronaut. I'm Bill Jones reporting. You can hear the rest of the story about Kent's adventures in outer space and his prediction for landing on Mars by logging on to 
jonesnewsservice.com. Again, that's jonesnewsservice.com. Or just click the link on this radio station's website. Like most Americans, Colorado-born astronaut Kent Rominger is celebrating the 50th anniversary of the first moon landing. But Kent also remembers one very tragic day in February of 2003 when the space shuttle Columbia blew up over Texas while returning from outer space. Kent remembers he had just been promoted to chief of the astronaut office when the tragedy happened. And that was the first space shuttle crew that I launched as the chief. And part of my duties are... When they come back in, I am airborne in our shuttle training aircraft, evaluating the weather, and I give a go for them. And he says it took a while for reality to set in. You know, real time, uh, it became evident when we lost contact with them. And at the timing they were supposed to be showing up at the field, they didn't. Uh, I knew, you know. Mm -hmm. So I guess if they're playing touchdown time, you know, within... 30 seconds of that, and I knew it was not a good day. Kenton was the commander on two Columbia flights, one in 1999 and the other in 2001, before that fateful day on February 1st, 2003. I'm Bill Jones reporting. You can hear the rest of the story about Kent's adventures in outer space and his prediction for landing on Mars by logging on to www.jonesnewsservice.com. Again, that's jonesnewsservice.com or just click the link on this radio station's website. Five, four, three, two, one, liftoff. Hall of Fame we astronaut liftoff. Kent Rominger of Del Norte, Colorado, has flown approximately 27 million miles in space and orbited Earth more than a thousand times but he says the future of space exploration is far more exciting. So in the moon, it's exciting because we've got goals, right? And Vice President Pence gave us goals to have a human on the moon within five years. So that, to me, is, is a really neat goal. And he says returning to the moon is only the first step of a much bigger goal. Uh, and then Mars, I think the late 2030s, uh, or when we will be on Mars, and, and that's that's going to be a real adventure, too. Uh, with kind of the normal space propulsion we have right now, it's an eight- to nine-month trip to get there. You'll stay there about that much time for the, literally the planets to align to come home. So it's a two-year trip. I'm Bill Jones reporting. You can hear the rest of the story about Kent's adventures in outer space by logging on to www.jonesnewsservice.com. Again, that's jonesnewsservice.com or just click the link on this radio station's website.